thousands of trees will suffer this fate before they pose a risk to human life. At a bee belt nature reserve near Wendover, around a third of trees are ash, and land manager Mark Valance shows me where felling has already begun. So this is one of the places where you've been cutting down ash trees, is that uh, right? Absolutely, yeah. So um, we're right on the edge of one of the paths here at Pavis Wood now, uh, and we've been felling ash trees that have become diseased over the last few years to make sure that people visiting the site are able to visit in a safe manner. So what is ash dieback? It's a, a fungal disease that came into the UK, um, possibly on pl planted stock from the continent about 10 years ago. It may have come in uh, as fungal spores. The fungus sort of stops the, um, the flow of water around the tree uh, and then basically reduces the, the ability of the tree to put on leaf cover. So over time, the tree will, will lose canopy and that affects the structural sort of stability of the tree, particularly the canopy. So you get lots of branches dropping off uh, at very uh, little notice. And that can be really unsafe. It can be incredibly unsafe, yeah. Ash dieback will push the species close to extinction. And because it's the second most common woodland tree in England, the ash's decline will have a huge impact on our landscape and on hundreds of other plants and animals that rely on it for their habitat. It's been a decade since this disease first arrived in the UK and it's now thought that around 95% of our ash trees will die, with only some 5% showing resistance. It's already affected three quarters of Bee Belt Nature Reserves and is estimated to cost the charity £1.2 million by 2026. The charity is only cutting down trees that pose a risk because they're close to paths, roads or properties. Still, up to 10,000 trees on this site alone may go. Others will be left to die naturally, creating habitats for insects, birds and bats as they decay. It's heartbreaking to be honest, it's a piece of work we don't want to undertake but we're being forced to, we don't really have any choice um, but we're trying where possible to make the best of it. The hope is that in areas where trees are felled, in time different habitats will be created for other species to take their place and eventually new saplings will sprout. Charlotte Brewer-Redney, ITV News, Nittring.